In the last video, I discussed how dissociative disorders, such as dissociative identity disorder, have root in childhood, unmet needs, and instability. In this episode, I will further explain the importance of trust versus mistrust in developing dissociative disorders. Insecurity in childhood, development of mistrust, and disintegration of experiences. When a child's physical survival and physical safety needs are consistently met, a child may consciously acknowledge their emotional needs. Basic emotional needs include a need for love, emotional connection, secure attachment, affection, understanding, and belonging. Children need assistance with emotional regulation and are ideally taught these skills from parents. Additionally, to develop healthy self-esteem, children need a sense of being seen, respected, and valued as unique individuals. They also need a sense of mastery of experiences, which engenders a feeling of capability and autonomy. If a child's basic needs are not met, it is psychologically dangerous for a child to acknowledge their caregiver's failing. Instead, the psyche may dissociate awareness of their unmet needs, for the psyche to fragment and the unmet need to be held by dissociated parts, to deny their own unsafety. For example, if a child's basic physical needs are unmet, they may deny their physical needs. In this state of denial for their inner experiences, they may not become consciously aware of their emotional needs. In order for the psyche to be able to integrate experiences, and for the overall personality to integrate by around age six, it is, therefore, crucial that a child's basic needs are consistently met. If a child's basic needs are unmet, they will not trust their needs to be met in the future. If a caregiver is neglectful or abusive, a child will not learn to trust in their own security in the world. Instead, they will learn to feel insecure and mistrustful, and believe the world is inconsistent, undependable, and potentially dangerous. Expectant of future neglect, the psyche may then disconnect from awareness of needs as a protective measure. With chronic unmet dependency needs, the needs may be unconsciously dissociated into separate psychic parts safely contained away from awareness. When an aspect of a child's environment is threatening to their safety, it is psychologically beneficial for the psyche to dissociate the threat from conscious awareness. In this way, trust and safety can be maintained. It is often necessary for a child to disown experiences and needs within the self when acknowledging trauma and unmet needs would dissuade trust in caregivers. Dissociation can be used unconsciously to shield unmet needs from conscious awareness, at which point they are neither acknowledged nor felt. Meanwhile, dissociated parts of the psyche hold the awareness. In childhood, my unmet needs were hidden from me, and I was able to not realize I even felt them. Meanwhile, other parts of my psyche struggled with their lack. Without conscious awareness of unmet needs, I was able to avoid acknowledging the traumatic truth that I could not rely on my caregivers or trust in my own safety in the world. The need for trust is why neglect and abuse at the hands of caregivers is so harmful for the psyche. Trust is shattered. Speaking from experience, if a young child does not find trust in the world, they will instead feel mistrusting and threatened. Instead of trusting in the future and feeling hope for life, they will feel hopeless and helpless. They may feel chronically unsafe and insecure, carry a constant, vague sense of unease, and even feel overwhelmed by their own fear gripped by paralyzing dread, terror, and panic. A child's need to earn trust in their own safety is an extremely powerful motivating factor in dissociation of early traumatic experiences. According to neurological researcher Dr. Alan Shore, even seemingly benign experiences like being left alone may be traumatic to young children due to their complete dependence upon their caregivers. For example, in decades past, if a child was crying, it was common practice to let them cry it out, meaning putting the young child in their room or bed alone, closing the door, and letting them cry, unsupported rather than providing comfort. This is severely traumatizing to a young child. Young children need assistance with emotional regulation, and until these skills are taught by their caregivers, they cannot healthily regulate their own emotions. An infant's response to trauma is comprised of two stages, hyperarousal, then dissociation. Initially, an infant who is left alone will respond with hyperarousal. 
increased heart rate, blood pressure, and respiration. At this time, an infant will express their distress by crying and then screaming. And at this point, an attentive caregiver would provide care and assistance with emotion regulation. However, if left unattended by caregivers, the child will then revert to dissociation. According to Dr. Alan Shore, dissociation is a later forming, longer lasting traumatic reaction, and it occurs in response to what an infant perceives as psychic catastrophe. As such, although a child who is left to cry it out may appear to fall into a peaceful sleep, they may actually be in a frozen state of dissociated terror. This example illustrates the importance of attentive caregiving in avoiding a dissociative response. It used to be commonly believed that a child would not be negatively impacted by such treatment under the mistaken belief that they would not remember. However, even if the mind forgets, even if an explicit memory is not formed, the emotions are remembered and stored in the body. This is because implicit memory, the sensory and emotional experience of events, is intact from birth. Although an infant may not explicitly remember their state of distress, the memory of the emotion is retained. In this way, overwhelming emotions can represent lasting trauma in the psyche, especially when those emotions are dissociated from conscious awareness and left unprocessed. To further understand how traumatic memory is held in the body and subconscious, and to learn more about treatment options, helpful resources include The Body Keeps the Score by Dr. Bessel van der Kolk, and w Waking the Tiger, Healing Trauma by Dr. Peter Levine. Coping with an unstable world by disconnecting from experiences. Stability and consistency within a caregiver relationship is crucial in order for an infant to develop clear expectations about the world and themselves. Stability provides a solid ground of safety, so to speak, which allows children to adapt to the inner changes that naturally occur during development like recognition of emotions and autonomy from parents and other potentially unnerving experiences that require children to find equilibrium or risk destabilization. If situated in an unstable, unsafe, and unpredictable environment, a child's psyche reacts by creating its own stability. The psyche tunes out external experiences and shuts down internal experiences in order to maintain a necessary sense of stability achieved with dissociation. In such situations, dissociation becomes a well-maintained protective barrier. I view psychic fragmentation as an extreme manifestation of disorganized attachment. In terms of attachment styles, disorganized attachment refers to attachment that is unstable, oscillating between approach and retreat. In psychic fragmentation, the disorganized attachment style extends beyond relational attachments to include disorganized attachment with self and internal and external world. For example, instead of remaining attached to experiences in a stable way, my psyche alternated between parts, allowing different parts to connect at different times. Whatever part was most suited to handle a situation was pushed to front, allowed to hold executive control of the body and primary awareness of the external world. I will overview the means by which experiences become associated with different senses of self. The psyche's mental actions, like personification of experiences, can be interrupted by traumatic overwhelm. In this way, the psyche's mental level, which refers to the level of psychological functioning, drops in response to traumatic events. In cases of psychic fragmentation, different parts will possess different mental levels of functioning. Psychic parts that hold a greater level of trauma emotional parts, will possess a lower mental level, while the relatively trauma-free parts, apparently normal parts, can achieve a higher mental level. The mental level of a part is important because mental level dictates a psyche's ability to engage in different actions, like executive functioning skills to be able to plan, focus upon, and execute tasks, or the personification and integration of material. A relatively low mental level lower mental functioning and less mental effort is required to integrate experiences deemed similar to those already known to the individual and experiences which do not involve extreme emotions. Therefore, psychic parts with a low mental level, like trauma holding parts, are able to integrate experiences that correlate with their earlier experiences. However, it takes a higher mental level, greater mental functioning and more mental effort 
to synthesize and personify new and highly emotional experiences. According to many clinical studies, experiencing overwhelming events can interrupt the psyche's usual integrative mental actions. One usual integrative mental action the psyche takes is to personify events. Therefore, if an event is considered psychologically overwhelming, mental actions like personification may be inhibited. If stress becomes overwhelming, mental level drops and integration of material is not achieved. When a traumatic event is not personified, an individual may develop full dissociative amnesia for the experience or amnesia for parts of the experience, resulting in conscious awareness of an event but as factual knowledge that does not seem applicable to oneself. Without personification, experiences are rendered ego dystonic, not associated to one's own sense of self. Because of this failure of integrative mental actions due to traumatic overwhelm, an individual who has undergone a traumatic event may report feeling as if it happened to someone else. When the mental action of personification is not achieved, this results in memories being stored as semantic rather than episodic memory. Semantic memory, which applies to words and knowledge of the world, lacks a self-reflective aspect, meaning it is not consciously linked to a personal experience or applied to a sense of self. Episodic memory, in contrast, which applies to memories of events in one's life, involves the knowledge that the experience comes from one's own past and is associated with one's own sense of self. In those with dissociative disorders, traumatic experiences appear to be more likely encoded as complex sensory motor and affective experiences pertaining to senses and emotions, which remain partially unintegrated. This lack of full integration leaves certain experiential information inaccessible to the normal psychic processing involved in the creation of episodic, personified memory. Not only does this lack of integration withhold information from being stored autobiographically, but the reduced integrative capacity leaves an individual less able to adapt to traumatic experience. This is because dissociation inhibits the ability to acknowledge and process the experience. Over a range of time and events, personification yields an integrated sense of self that is relatively independent of context. However, when personification fails, development of a coherent, singular sense of self across time is compromised. This is because, in order to act adaptively in the present, it is necessary for personification of current experiences to be based on integration of past history. In this way, psychic fragmentation into differentiated parts can be seen as a manifestation of state-dependent learning and memory. Successful integration of certain prior experiences provides a template to enable and promote the integration of later, similar experiences. Exposure to stressful events or acknowledgement of past events, like previously repressed traumatic material, can serve to raise an individual's mental level of functioning. However, only if that individual has adequate ability to cope. In this way, as a system heals and processes trauma, the mental level of different system members is raised to contribute to greater functionality of the entire system. In this episode, I have discussed the function of dissociation in bringing stability to the psyche, and the effect childhood instability and mistrust has on development of dissociative disorders. In the next section, I will further discuss theories behind dissociative disorders, such as the theory of structural dissociation of the personality. I hope you found this information helpful, and thank you for listening.